Mr. Chair. And that is the extent of the Russian part of the evening, unfortunately. Um, however, I'm very happy to be here. I'd like to thank Strelka and our sponsors tonight, Momondo, for inviting me to come and speak. It's a real pleasure to be back here in one of my favorite cities on Earth. Um, fascinating place. Uh, I was just married. My beautiful wife is here in the audience. And this trip has become part of our honeymoon. I really wanted to bring her here to show her this place that I love so much. There's so much history. It's what I describe to people as an onion city. You can keep feeling where layers are, and there's always something new to discover. So it's wonderful to be back. Снимаете, очищаете, so, видите что-то новое. Знаете, всегда есть чем вернуться. Что ж, расскажу коротко о своей работе. Я генетик, я антрополог, я описал для себя с научной точки зрения, по крайней мере, как генетик, занимающийся человеческой популяцией. Как-то немножечко это да, озадачивает, понимаю. Что же я имею в виду здесь? Все нормально? Все в порядке? Ага, прекрасно. We, as human population geneticists, attempt to explain the patterns of human diversity. We see them in travel, 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 in они разнятся в разных местах, какие проблемы uh, вызывает это в популяции. И этим занимается эволюционная генетика. И здесь есть некоторые темы, некоторые аспекты или вопросы, на которые мы можем действительно обратить более тесное внимание, более конкретное внимание при помощи научного инструментария, собирая данные, вырабатывая гипотезы, и на основании этих данных уже можем производить какие-то конкретные выводы. Первый вопрос, который мы спросили, это каково происхождение? Вот мы, как вид, вот как гомо сапиенс, мы же как-то связаны с друг с другом или нет? И если связаны, то насколько тесно? Второй вопрос, который мы спросили, это такой вопрос пути. Вот если мы все происходим из одного какого-то источника, как вид, у нас общее происхождение, то как же так вот получилось, что мы заселили каждый уголок Земли? И вот в этом процессе мы выработали какие-то внешние закономерности, которые сейчас можно зрительно наблюдать между нами. Далее, вот мы прошли вопрос происхождения. Это большой вопрос, важный вопрос в биологии, и Дарвин, в принципе, на него уже ответил где-то век назад. Он написал в своей второй, самой известной книге «Происхождение человека», опубликованной в 1871 году, так вот, он писал, что в рамках одного региона все виды связаны друг с другом. Вот таким образом, Африка, которая обитала, где была всегда обитание как раз обезьян, горилла, шимпанзе, и так как эти виды сейчас самые близкие родственники человека, то очевидно, что наши ранние предки, вернее, наши самые первые предки, жили примерно на этой территории. Так что с вопросом происхождения, в принципе, но мы, наверное, разобрались. Или нет? Потому что, конечно, Дарвин говорит о определенной вещи здесь, но это, да, наше общее происхождение с... He was absolutely right, even though he didn't know it at the time. We have virtually no data based on this. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appeared in Africa. We now know from the fossil records that the first apes appe
исторически на это смотрит палеоантропология. Мы копаем кости земли и при помощи формы черепа. Это похоже на моего кузена, на племянника Владислава, моего друга. Вот недостающее звено, которое показывает, откуда мы происходим. Но я бы хотел предложить следующее. Да, палеоантропология, конечно же, важная область. Она дает нам прекрасные возможности, очень интересные возможности посмотреть на прошлое и происхождение. Она не показывает нам вероятность прямой связи, прямой линии предков которая на самом деле нужна науке, потому что мы видим возможности, но не четкие вероятности. Вот вы смотрите на прекрасный пример такого. Здесь три uh, вымерших uh, вида, потенциальные предки человека. Слева направо, Homo erectus, и Paranthropis voiciae. То есть все это потенциальные Все они были обнаружены в одной примерно географической зоне, в Кении. Все они, в принципе, находятся примерно двумя миллионами лет назад. Так вот, у нас есть три потенциальных наших предка, жили в одном и том же месте, но не все трое непосредственно имеют отношение к нам. И кто из них? Наш предок, с кем я лично связан, я понятия не имею. Здесь есть возможности, но не четкие вероятности, которые нам нужны. И мы, генетики, смотрим немножко иначе. У нас другой подход. Мы ничего не выкапываем из прошлого, не гадаем, как это связано с настоящим. Мы смотрим на настоящее и отправляемся назад во времени. Мы знаем точно, что все, кто живет сегодня, у всех у нас были родители. Родители были родители и так далее. Таким образом, должна быть какая-то возможность. Возможность эффективно сконструировать семейное древо для каждого живого человека на, на планете. Генеалогически подойти к происхождению человека. Now, I'm sure many people in the audience know something about their family tree. Maybe their parents, their grandparents, their uncles, their cousins. But everyone, no matter how well they know their genealogy, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their ancestors, knows that they are related to their ancestors. But everyone, no matter how well they know their 
Это происходит очень редко, но это можно измерить. Примерно 100 мутаций в одном геноме в одно поколение. Только отпечатки, знаете, когда пасутка первый ДНК, когда клетка из клетки меняется, когда передаются такие мутации вашим детям, вашим внукам, вашим правнукам, они становятся маркерами вот такого рода наследия. Когда вы делитесь этими маркерами с другим человеком, то вы делитесь, соответственно, общим предком. Когда-то, много-много лет назад, поколение назад, произошло какое-то изменение. By looking at the patterns of genetic markers, that we can start to connect people into ever deeper branches of the human family tree. What do these markers look like? Well, this is actual DNA sequence data. Five individuals who've had the same region of their genome sequenced. And they've been lined up. The first thing you'll notice if you read down through these sequences, five unrelated people, is that they're basically identical. Humans are 99.9% identical at the DNA level. We only differ on average at one in every thousand nucleotide positions. From some of them we're not even closely related to. That's a remarkably low level of genetic variation. When we look at our cousins, the great apes, the gorillas, the chimps, the orangs, these species we think of as being on the verge of extinction, they have between four and ten times as much genetic variation as we do. What this reflects is a history where at some point in the past our species was also on the verge of extinction. It happened around 70,000 years ago. It coincided with a really bad part of the last ice age, the eruption of the massive volcano. You know, I'll be happy to take questions about it at the end, but according to the genetic data, the total number of humans around that time dropped down to fewer than 10,000 and perhaps as few as 2,000 people. And we still carry the signal of that near extinction event in our DNA. So it's very hard to find these genetic markers, these differences between people, but if we look carefully enough down here in this region, G, 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 A, G, a single a letter change from a G to an A. If you share that marker with another person, you share an ancestor, the person who first had that change in their DNA and passed it on to you. And by looking at people from around the world and asking a really open-ended question, what does the pattern of diversity look like? How can we construct trees and where do those trees point us in terms of the search for origins and journey? We have been able to construct a tree for everyone alive today. Everyone sitting in this room right now in fact, all 7.4 billion people walking around on planet Earth right now fall somewhere onto one of the branches of these family trees. Mitochondrial DNA, they're useful for tracing maternal lines of descent. It tells you about your mother's 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 mother. The equivalent on the male side, the Y chromosome tells you about your father's 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 father. Everyone falls somewhere into one of the branches of these trees. Pretty amazing. Now, these are actually very simple versions of the trees that we use when we're designing our studies, doing the work in the laboratory, looking at tens of thousands of branches rather than the few dozen that you see here. But they, these trees still look kind of complicated sitting out in the audience on a beautiful evening in Moscow at 8.30. So let's simplify them even further. Combine them, turn them on the side so that the root is at the bottom and the branches come off the top. What's the take-home message here? Well, it's that the longest branches, the deepest branches in the human family tree leading back to the root are found only in African populations. And because the length of the branches is proportional to these mutational changes clicking off in every generation, tick-tock, tick-tock, like a clock, what that means is that Africans have more diversity than anyone else have been accumulating this diversity for longer than any other group. And therefore, our species originated in Africa. Okay, we're back where we started. Darwin suggested that a long time ago without having to look at DNA sequences and get bogged down in all of that biochemistry. Except, we're not talking about a common ancestor in Africa that lived millions of years ago. Rather, we're talking about individuals, men and women like us, who walked the savannas of Eastern Africa Africa, as recently as 200,000 years ago. All of humanity can coalesce back to a small number of ancestors in Africa in that very short span of time. And in fact, it's only in the last 60,000 years that a small group of Africans has left that continent to go out and populate the rest of the world. 2,000 human generations, it's the blink of an eye in an evolutionary sense.
In that short expanse of time, we've scattered to the wind in the process of generating all of the diversity that we see today. All of these things that we think of as being so deep-seated biologically, our skin color, our hair color, our eye color, our languages, they're all very recent. The peel away these superficial features, we're all much more closely related than we ever expected. 99.9% identical at the DNA level. Now, for over a decade, between 2005 and 2015, I led the Genographic Project at the National Geographic Society. This was a concerted effort among scientists and members of the general public from around the world to make sense of the human story. Armed with this knowledge that we've only emerged from Africa very recently, our goal was to map the details of the human journey, how we populated the world, how languages had diverged from each other, how language families formed, how people had adapted to their environments in different ways, how we developed agriculture, and how the great expansions of the last 5,000 years, the Bronze Age, the Iron Age, and so on, had an impact on the genetic patterns we see today. The Genographic Project, at its core, was an academic project, a research effort, a consortium of scientists from around the world focused on work with indigenous and traditional peoples living in their particular corner of the globe. Now, why are these indigenous groups so important to our work? Well, think about your own ancestry. I'll think about mine out loud. I live in Texas now. I lived until recently on the east coast of North America. My ancestors come from Scandinavia, Germany, and England. What does my DNA tell you about the ancient history of these places? It's very hard to say, because it's all mixed up. I'll return to this in the end, because it's the overall theme of the talk tonight. But there are people who've maintained that connection to their ancient geography for a very long time, hundreds, thousands, even tens of thousands of years in the case of some populations. The world's indigenous and traditional people who've lived in the same place for a long time and give us a glimpse of what their ancestors' genetic patterns would look like. It's the core of what we focused on scientifically. But when we were designing the project, I felt very strongly that it shouldn't just be the story of the world's 100, maybe 200 million indigenous people. It's a story of all 7.4 billion of us. And we wanted to open it up and give everybody the opportunity to get their DNA tested, creating in the process what became known as the consumer genomics industry. Anybody who wanted to could go onto a website, order a kit, swab their cheek, no need to draw blood, it's all in a few cells on the inside of your mouth, and a few weeks later get your results back on a website. Figure out how you fit into a family tree, something about your own ancestry, but also helping us with the science, helping us to discover new things over time. And the third component was the legacy fund. This was a way to give something tangible back to the world's indigenous and traditional people, many of whom are leading very marginalized lives in places that are already very poor, often forced to leave behind their ancient homelands, their ancient villages, typically moving to a growing megacity, they go to Mumbai, they go to Sao Paulo or Brazil. When they do, their kids stop speaking the original language, and within a generation or two, the culture is gone. We're actually going through a period of cultural and mass extinction at the moment that parallels the biodiversity crisis that we talk about so often, and interestingly, it tends to be happening in exactly the same places as the biodiversity crisis. Linguists tell us that of the 6,000 languages spoken around the world today, by the end of this century, between half and 90 percent will be extinct, gone forever. Most have never been written down. Through the legacy grants, we hope to do something to raise awareness about this. They were initiated by indigenous people around the world in an effort to preserve their culture in the face of this looming crisis. So the third component of the project, very important component. Um, diversity is what really defines us as a species. Well, how do we do? Just a quick summary by the numbers. It's easy to make comparisons on the basis of numerical data. In the end, over 72,000 indigenous people 
from over a thousand discrete populations around the world on every continent, not Antarctica, there were no indigenous people who lived there historically, so, but 72,000 from every inhabited continent, um, and it's yielded a wealth of scientific data which we continue to analyze to this day. We just published another paper a couple of weeks ago, over 60 publications, scientific publications have resulted from this. The big surprise, though, was response on the part of the general public to the opportunity to test their own DNA. The morning that I announced the Genographic Project in Washington, D.C. with ambassadors and news anchors and all sorts of interesting people out in the audience listening, waiting for this announcement, I stepped aside before I hopped up on stage and talked to the then CEO of National Geographic, a man named John Fahey, who for over a decade had been the CEO of Time Life. Um, and John told me, listen, Spencer, I ran this big publishing company for a long time. I'm running National Geographic now. I understand consumers. I understand what they're willing to pay for. No one's going to be willing to pay $100 to test their DNA. If you sell a few hundred of these kits in the next Продавать там сто таких наборов в ближайшие годы, что ж. Желаю удачи, надеюсь, все будет хорошо. Он как-то недооценил потребительскую сторону вообще вот этого истории. То есть, ну, там, дарительская удача, с наукой все будет нормально. Так вот, в день, когда мы анонсировали этот проект, 10 тысяч людей сразу заказали себе эти наборы к концу года. Um, and when I left the project, when, when it wound down in 2015, people from over 140 different countries had joined, including places like Vanuatu, Kazakhstan, Vatican City. Two people ordered kits from Vatican City, and we'd love to know who they are. It also raised a fair amount of money in addition to adding a lot of data to our database of over 700,000 people. We added about two and a half million dollars for the legacy grants. And we were able to give away 75 grants around the world projects to preserve languages in the Valley of Tajikistan, the former language, the lingua franca of the Silk Road, Aboriginal dance patterns, preserving their knowledge about their history, their song lines among the Aborigines of Australia, projects aimed at looking at the interaction between people and their environment, the healing journey along the Yukon River with tribes in southeastern Alaska. In northwestern Canada, and a really interesting project with the Shuar people living in the foothills of the Andes in Ecuador, trying to preserve their ethnic botanical knowledge, their knowledge of the plants that they used. And many of these plants are used for medicinal purposes. Think about what's been going on with thousands of populations diverging over tens of thousands of years. People get to know their environment, trial and error. There's a tremendous amount of collected knowledge that we're at risk of losing because again, none of it's How many potential treatments for cancer, or Zika virus, or HIV, might we be missing out if we don't try to preserve some of this knowledge before it's too late? So, just a quick overview of the genographic project. Now, I'm often asked by people, what's the most surprising thing that came out of this decade-long huge effort, IBM is our partner, the Genome Institute, and so on. What's the most surprising thing that came out of this huge effort, IBM is our partner, and so on. What's the most surprising thing that came out of this decade-long huge effort, IBM is our partner, and so on. What's the most surprising thing that came out of this decade-long huge effort, IBM is our partner, and so on. Мы много конечно, really много того, что мы сделали, но главное, что вот меня поразило, это вот вдохновение, involved, огромный интерес широкой публики к этому проекту, в этом проекте. So it's not just the sheer numbers of people who join the project, but it's their excitement about trying to understand more about the results and enabling those discoveries. And this is a great example. And this is an example that came to light by accident. A woman who was working on the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and that was the same project that we were working on, and
email eventually. Так вот, я получил это письмо, и я был очень вдохновленным, не потому что я должен был заново как-то протестировать эти 700 тысяч, нет. Наверное, даже лаборатория была бы одна просьба, нет. Дело в том, что у венгров вообще очень интересная позиция в этой культурной дифференциации в Европе, которая присутствует в Европе. Посмотрите, даже лингвистически это очень интересно. Посмотрите, это германская семья языков здесь сейчас, и романская семья языков, франко-итальянский, испанский язык, славянский язык, конечно, языки, на которых говорят в Индии, хинди, конечно же, часто, тесно с вами, индоевропейской семьи языков, фарси тот же самый. Так вот, все это языки, которые, в принципе, происходят из одного источника, и, наверное, также они не существовали и здесь, в Южной России, и в Украине, несколько тысяч лет назад, шесть тысяч лет назад, затем они остались по всей Евразии, и сегодня каждый в Европе говорит на одном из этих языков. Есть исключения. Есть баски, которые живут на севере Испании или в Франции. Из них такой вот изолированный язык. Он не имеет связи ни с каким другим языком на свете. Вот лингвистически этот язык мог был занесен до Смарса. Понимаете? Может быть, этот язык очень далеко связан, может быть, с древним шумерским языком, ближневосточными языками, которые сейчас существуют, но это просто такое исключение, странность, аномалия на территории и есть венгерский, еще есть венгерский язык, он на самом деле часть большой такой уральской семьи, это языки в Финляндии существуют, это финно-угорская такая ветвь языков, и более широко это уральская семья языков, и вот как говорится в этом словом, уральская, это наверное происходит к востоку, это все имеет происхождение к востоку, а от уральских гор в Сибири. Мы знаем исторические источники, что около 100 тысяч лет назад rode their horses across the steppe land into Central Europe and conquered the region that is presently Hungary, settled down, brought within their culture, massive cultural replacement in and out, replacing the language of an entire people within a couple of generations. That's a pretty big impact. When we as geneticists see something like this, we think, wow, there must have been a lot of people moving in. We go in, we sample the Hungarian population, the typical мы, соответственно, проанализировали при помощи простого инструментария, изучив буквально 100-50 человек, и мы смотрим, что ж, да, венгры очень похожи на окружающее население, генетически они выглядят так же, как чехи, как поляки и другие центральноевропейские народы. Мы не можем не смогли найти Свидетельство вот этой вот мощной миграции, которая случилась около тысячи лет назад. Даже если бы это был очень сильный культурный момент. Но давайте посмотрим, сколько у нас здесь есть людей с без какого-то прямого... И, к сожалению, We saw those Asian genetic lineages. Very low frequency, two or three percent. Now this is something we expected. The power of having a large sample size, you will see rare events. You wouldn't have seen with a much smaller sample size. But that's not the lesson. That I learned from this. Rather, the lesson that I learned was the only reason we looked for this pattern was because we were looking for this pattern. The only reason we looked for this pattern is because this woman was interested in her own results. That's the power of citizen science. Та сила гражданской науки, которую мы можем наблюдать. Люди, у которых нет докторской диссертации, обычные люди, которые просто заинтересованы в своей собственной генетике. Им просто любопытно. И они таким образом при помощи инструментов могут находить новые вот эти вещи научные. Буквально армия, сотен тысяч гражданских ученых могут открывать вещи, которые коллективная группа десяти докторов наук не смогла понять, не смогла увидеть, пока эта женщина не привыкла к нашему вниманию к этому. Вот она, сила гражданской науки. И мы стараемся это строить во все наши продукты, если говорить о потребительской геномике. Я хочу поговорить немного о 
a couple of revolutions that have happened in the last five years or so, five to ten years, in the study of our ancient origins, the study of genetic anthropology or human population genetics. The first is the rapid advances in genome sequencing technology. Um, sequencing the entire genome, not just little pieces of, of DNA, which we were limited to for most of the, the time that I was training in this field, the 1980s, 1990s, Billions of dollars. You can now do that in a couple of days. In a laboratory, dollars, in общем-то, вот делать усилия. Теперь там можно за пару дней в лаборатории. For less than a thousand dollars. It's really extraordinary. It's the most rapidly changing technology in history. The other huge advance has come from the application of that technology, the underlying biochemistry of it, to study DNA from ancient skeletal materials, skulls and bones and teeth that are thousands, even tens of thousands of years old. So instead of sequencing only people alive today and then applying a statistical model to try and infer what happened in the past. We can literally go back in time. It's like a genetic time machine. We can go in with the archaeologists on a dig, pull out bones very carefully, remove DNA from them, sequence it in the laboratory, and we have a sample from 4300 BC or 43,000 years ago or whenever it might be. It literally is like a time machine. So I mentioned this before. Um, genomic sequencing, the most rapidly changing technology in human history. Moore's law, which Gordon Moore described back in the early 1970s, it was the back of the envelope calculations that started off as a, a joke at a conference. He was one of the co-founders of Intel, which of course developed a lot of the computer chips that we have today. He said, computer technology seems to be changing at such a rate that it's predictable, and every 18 to 24 months it's going to double. In speed or half in price. And that has pretty much held up for several decades now. You can literally draw that regression line and see that he was absolutely spot on way back in the early 1970s. Genomic sequencing technology was paralleling that until about 2007 when what we call next generation sequencing came online. And Illumina, a company based in San Diego, California, is really the company that brought that to market by acquiring the technology from a company. Selexa, we won't go into the, the technical details, but they released their first machines in 2007, and you can see that the cost of sequencing suddenly dropped off a cliff, changing it five times the rate of Moore's law. It is literally impossible, and I know this is an entrepreneur who's put together business plans, it is literally impossible to put together more than a three-year plan, technologically speaking, for a genomics company, because there is something completely disruptive waiting around for four years. And you can see the cost of sequencing a genome is rapidly approaching zero. Sequencing itself is becoming a commodity. It's going to become ubiquitous within the next five years. You will be able to get a genome sequence for well under a hundred dollars. This is literally the sum total of your genetic information. Well under a hundred dollars and rapidly approaching free. The value comes from the interpretation. Происходит от расшифровки. В чем же смысл всех этих больших данных? Так вот, геномика — это сейчас это такая вот игра в области Big Data, большой данный. Это очень, очень вдохновляющий переход. Я в начале своей карьеры, вот в начале этого графика было понимать, очень много ручной работы, лаборатории, тяжелая, сложная работа. Вы просто ломаете спину вот так вот от этой тяжести. Теперь это почти бесплатно. Но расшифровка этих данных — вот где настоящая. Moving beyond just sequencing Y chromosomes, mitochondrial DNA out into the whole genome allows us to ask new questions. We're not simply looking at ancestral migration paths because our DNA hasn't just been along for the ride. It's changed over time. There's a reason why people living in the tropics, in Africa, the most tropical continent on Earth, have darker skin than people living in high latitudes. We've adapted to having less 
So we can make use of the fact that most of our genome undergoes recombination. The chromosome pairs, one from your mom, one from your dad, actually shuffle with each other. In every generation, and over time, you generate patterns of different populations that are consistent with the history of that population. So there's a certain background level of shuffling that has gone on in any given population. It's dependent on population history, as I said. Different population size, but also the history of selection of the And by scanning the genome and looking for regions that seem и смотрим на разные аномалии в рукомбинации, разные уровни шахтов, разные уровни комбинирования, перемешивания. Мы пытаемся найти паттерны, модели. Это похоже на то, что паттерны вот вкуса. Мы видим секции ДНК, которые отличаются. Они отличаются, потому что здесь происходило определенное отличие. Часть ДНК, которая очень похожа в рамках большого количества индивидов, вряд ли это какая-то что-то, наверное, здесь случилось. Well, Какая-то произошла селекция. Так вот, здесь мы смотрим на генетический вариант, который позволяет, например, там, западной uh, uh, евразиатской популярности uh, uh, людям с Северной Африки, с Ближнего Востока, из Европы. Вот видите, генетический та часть генетического кода, которая показывает мутацию, в рамках которого происходит способность способность переваривать молоко. После двух лет последнего возраста они теряют эту способность. Но где-то на Ближнем Востоке, после бронзового века, после бронзового века, они обнаружили, что они могут вред домашних животных, коров не могут доить молоко. И употреблять это молоко. И вдруг молоко стало важной частью нашей диеты is for lactase persistence, the ability to digest milk into adulthood in European populations. So we can scan down the entire genome, chromosome 1, chromosome 2, chromosome 3, across the entire thing, and we can look for these little signals of selection. And each one of these is an incredible story about the hardships that our ancestors faced, the details of what their lives were like. We know the who, мы смотрим, что, где, как, когда и почему. Вероятно, освоение лактозы. Но мы видим цвет кожи, изменимый системой. Кое-что мы видим, мы получили от неандертальцев. Они жили в Евразии сотни тысяч лет, адаптировались к биологической среде, к патогенам. Мы пришли из Африки недавно с нашими собственными системами. И мы впитывали вот эту ДНК иммунной системы, чтобы сопротивляться этим новым патогенам. Мы видим свидетельства этого, раскиданные по разным патогенам в рамках нашей генома. Through our study of ancient DNA, is that, in fact, when we encountered our cousins, the Neanderthals and the Denisovans, the Denisovans only described at the genetic level. We do not have an intact skeleton. This is a tooth and a pinky bone, a little finger bone, discovered in a cave in the Altai Mountains in Siberia, dating to around 44,000 years ago. This is a tooth and a pinky bone, a little finger bone, discovered in a cave in the Altai Mountains in Siberia, dating to around 44,000 years ago. The Neanderthals and the Denisovans were like different sides of the same coin. Neanderthals were basically the Western version of that hominin species. We all share a common origin back in Africa around 600,000 years ago. These guys left shortly after that. They're living in Eurasia over hundreds of thousands of years. Neanderthals over in Europe and made it a little ways into Siberia, down into the Middle East. The Denisovans really the Eastern or Asian variety. 
жили, но один из Вот мы, да, единственный вид было, может быть, один или два вида человеческих, которые жили в Африке. Эти ребята жили в Азии, были такие хоббиты, которые жили в Индонезии. Вот был такой странный толкинистический мир разных существ, которые были похожи на нас, но не совсем похожи. Да, вот мы выжили, мы сделали так, что все остальные выиграли эту конкуренцию, но оказывается, мы секвенировали ген, Modern humans carry a little bit of those other creatures inside of ourselves. Around two percent of the average non-African genome today traces back to the Neanderthal genome. And in fact, in some populations, in Papua New Guinea, for instance, as much as seven or eight percent of the genome traces back to these other hominid species, primarily the Denisovans, the Asian version of the Neanderthals. So yes, we drove the Neanderthals. Мы победили неандертальцев и в рамках революционной конкуренции, но, но мы кое-что от них взяли. They really didn't go extinct. They live on inside of us, inside of our DNA. And in fact, as we've started to assemble more and more human sequences, some of us have started doing an interesting calculation where we look at the increase in the amount of Neanderthal DNA over time. And we're getting pretty close to being able to construct an entire Neanderthal genome, at least the significant parts of it, the coding regions of the genome. So in a sense, a big chunk of the Neanderthal genome lives on today in us. And we are a mix. And Aussie, of course, has more Neanderthal DNA than most people do. But ancient DNA research isn't just revealing details about these early trysts with our ancient hominid cousins. It's also revealing. Shocking insights того, into more recent events. What we would think of as the historical period, recorded history, if you will. The Bronze Age. Now, what you're looking at over here is the site of Jericho in the Middle East, on the West Bank, present-day Israel. Palestinian territory. This was from Dame Kathleen Kenyon's excavation of the site back in the 1950s. And this gentleman down at the bottom is standing at 10,000 BC, 12,000 years ago. And all of these layers of history, which can be carbon dated, built up upon that until you reach the present day up at the top. As I said, genetically, we can now go into these archaeological excavations and pull ancient DNA material out and start to reveal population-level insights into things that were happening at the time. So, for instance, when we see the spread of the Bronze Age into Western Europe from places in the south and in the east, which is where archaeologists have always pointed to them coming from, the big debate is, is that the migration of a culture only, or is it accompanied by the spread of people carrying that culture? Same thing with the spread of farming. These have been huge debates in archaeology for well over a hundred years. And archaeologists have pretty resoundingly come down on the side of cultures move but people stay put. Until ancient DNA came along. And what we discovered was that certainly in the case of Europe, when the Neolithic moved into Europe at the Fertile Crescent, between 8 and 10,000 years ago, there was a massive genetic replacement that took place, such that the Neolithic farmers and their DNA that you can sample from 6, 7, 8,000 years ago are more closely related to people from the the Middle East today than to the hunter-gatherers who lived there prior to that. Literally, there was, in effect, a big genocide at that time with this new culture coming in. But the big genocide occurred later with the Bronze Age. The Bronze Age probably the most violent period in human history, at least according to the data that we are seeing. If you look at this tree down here, these are genetic lineages found in Europe today. And notice that the time depth simply does not go back beyond the Bronze Age. It collapses around 5,000 years ago. The oldest lineages that you're seeing in places like Germany, 
Scandinavia and the UK only date back to the Bronze Age. There was a paper that was published two weeks ago that said as the Bell Beaker people spread the Bronze Age and presumably Indo-European languages, the language I'm speaking now, into the UK around 1500 to 2000 years ago, 90% of the population was replaced. 90% of the genetic lineages only date to that replacement. Everything that was there before died off. And we're starting to find evidence in archaeological sites of massive killing fields, huge battles involving tens of thousands of people during this time. We even think we've discovered um, a blood clotting factor that seems to have been subject to very strong selection around this time. Literally people adapting to the level of bloodshed in that society. So, DNA revealing fascinating details about the how and the why of human history, as well as the who, where and when. And I just want to mention very quickly as we're here in Russia, it's the Yamnaya people who probably kicked all of that off. So this is a very famous steppe culture, people who domesticated the horse, spoke probably a very early form of Indo-European. Their mass migration into Central Europe and ultimately on into Northern Europe is what probably sparked all of these events. And this is something that until a couple of years ago I never would have guessed that genetically speaking, I'm close closer to the people living in the Pontic steppe in Ukraine, north side of the Black Sea, than I am to my supposed hunter-gatherer ancestors in Scotland, in Ireland, and in England. Um, fascinating, fascinating details being revealed by this. Now I want to talk quickly about consumer genomics and how it's developed over the last 12, 15 years or so, and where it might be headed in the future, and talk a little bit about my new company in Austin. So if we look at the adoption curve of genetic testing, the whole industry really dates back to around 2002, when a couple of companies, family tree DNA in the U.S., and a company called Oxford Ancestors in the U.K., these were basically companies that were created over existing academic labs. And what would happen in the case of family tree DNA, around that time there was a famous publication on the Kohanim, the Jewish priests, have a particular Y chromosome signature. And a lot of people were writing into the lab and asking, can I get my Y chromosome tested, my DNA, and see if I'm part of this you know, priestly caste descended from Aaron. Um, lineage. And so a company was set up, but you're literally talking about a few dozen people a year, starting to morph into maybe a couple of hundred at the time that we sat down and, and thought, well, how do we actually scale this? How do we create an industry out of what is at the moment kind of something for enthusiasts? Um, so when we put together the genographic kit, it was, it was pretty revolutionary. And as I said, when we announced it, we sold 10,000 kits in the first day and 100,000 by the end of the year. So if you look up through 2005 when we launched and so on, the curve is going up pretty linearly. Um, 23 and Me, which some of you might have heard of, launched in 2007, um, but its product was priced at $1,000, and a lot of people decided they couldn't afford that, so it really didn't have an impact on the, the industry at all. They started to drop their prices, and we got into a little bit of a price skirmish, um, 2009 or so, but still we're going up in a pretty linear fashion. But then we hit an inflection point. It took about a decade to go from the very first person testing their DNA through a consumer entity to the millionth person testing. It took only a little over a year for the second millionth person to test. We went through an inflection point around that one million mark. And it continues to increase. Ancestry DNA, which launched their product in 2012, Ancestry DNA in the fourth quarter of last year alone sold 1.4 million DNA tests. UBS, UBS Bank, did a white paper on, on the industry last year and estimate that it's going to be a $10 billion industry in the next few years. And beyond that, the sky's the limit. Um, they draw comparisons to the development of cell phones, where early estimates were that 
No one would То есть это можно сравнить things, с смартфонами. Раньше говорили, там, ой, смартфоны дорогие, это рынок ниш, кому это нужно. Сейчас мы не можем представить жизнь без этих штук в нашем кармане. Это же не так же. Можно смотреть на геномику. Это те данные, которые в ближайшие 5 лет заключат каждый и за очень низким ценам. Это будет те данные, которые будут носить с собой легко. И я думаю, что вероятно, они смогут расшифровывать свои геномы на уровне рождения ребенка. То есть можно будет получать такие данные и далее будут эти данные, например, как ваши дипломы из университета, как ваша социальная страховка будут вместе с вами, как данные ваших в соцсетях, это будет такая же обычная информация, которая будет вам знакома. И далее произошел некоторый перелом в 2012 Так вот, почему же это происходит сейчас? Так вот, ДНК стала, ну, в США, на самом деле, даже в других странах, в мире, частью вот такой национальной осознанности, даже рекламы, которые запускали большие корпорации, не биотехнические компании, а Dell, например, технологическая компания, была на Инстаграме, большая компания, продавая в США, о том, что есть разные аспекты бизнеса, как часть ДНК, они буквально показывали такую молекулу, которая там вот плавала в страшном бывающем виде у Тойота, запустила IBM, национальной культуры в США в 2003 году это не было таким положением вещей. Люди боялись ДНК в начале 2000-х Фарспирского периода, клонирования, yes, чтобы делать с моей информацией. Теперь все же, это не такое большое дело. Uh, 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 наука вот эта генетика стала частью популярной культуры. Extremely comfortable sharing their most private information. I mentioned social media. There was no Facebook or Twitter. Instagram испытывают такие проблемы с тем, чтобы поделиться такого рода информацией, узнать эту информацию. Я думаю, что в нашу эпоху, когда мы протестировали миллион человек, вот, знаете, в принципе, вот, это стало вирусом. Из уст в уста эта история стала распространяться, и вдруг много-много людей об этом узнали. На конференции, на бизнес-встречи, на вечеринке. Люди встречают друг друга и говорят, и вдруг кто-то рассказывает о своем тесте ДНК. Люди говорят об этом, люди обмениваются мыслями об этом, и вдруг вы думаете, может быть, и мне стоит попробовать, почему нет? Посмотрите, посмотрите, вот киноиндустрия. Можно сравнить вот экономическая модель, на которой смотрят киноиндустрия, которая планирует выпуски в течение года, они много-много денег выгоняют в маркетинг, а потом получают в первый уикенд выпуски фильма, уже получают их деньги обратно. Если не получается, они сразу же из кинотеатра фильмы забирают и сразу же на Netflix видеослужбы отправляют в стриминговые сервисы. Ну точно так же вот и у нас, то есть произошло, то есть маркетинг, люди узнали об этом, кривая растет, 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 и потом был момент перехода, и вдруг происходит экспоненциальный рост. Интересно здесь, что... Аккумулятивно, в общей сложности, um, вот, доход, uh, вот, на самом деле, film, like вот, для такого фильма, so когда не происходит экспоненциальный рост маркетинга, а все происходит в этой же на основании вот такого органического роста популярности, four, даже больше, um, даже сильнее. Теперь у нас есть такая большая четверка компаний, вы, наверное, может быть, даже слышали о них. Такая большая четверка компаний, потребительских экономики. Так вот, моя компания, это стартап, мы выпускаем наш первый продукт в третьем квартале 2017 года, буквально в ближайшие пару месяцев, август, сентябрь, наверное, это будет выпуск. У нас в партнере есть Helix, это часть, которая компания, которая выпускает Genome Scale Sequencing, и мы 
that powers these guys today, the genome scale sequencing, sequence only once, and you're done um, at a very, very, very low price because of that close partnership with Illumina. And again, the idea is that sequencing is rapidly approaching three, and it's going to be a very interesting time. What we're trying to do is, in effect, build the app store for consumer genomics. Again, sequence your genome once at a very low price of entry. As we discover new things scientifically, or you decide you want to interact with your genome, in a different way, you can download an app for a low price, and it's a digital purchase. So the whole it's a digital play rather than a biotechnology play. Um, you may be interested early on in life about medical conditions. Your child might have. As you get older, you may become a competitive athlete, or create a training regime around your genetic information. Can I improve my performance by looking at my DNA? Maybe you have kids, you get older. Games and makes. And you want to figure out how to lose that weight. Can I design a diet to my DNA? And maybe you get a little bit older and want to tell your kids about the ancestry and where they came from and all their cousins. Start to download ancestry apps. It's a lot of fun. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And the application is a little bit more complicated. And on any given Friday or Saturday night, among the 200 to 300 patrons, probably find most of the world's major genetic leaders floating around in that. Potentially interbreeding populations. Now, when I talk to Nat Geo about trying to actually do this experiment, they say we're a family-friendly organization. We're not going to do this in a nightclub. But what we will do? Maybe we can do it. 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 Maybe we Половина людей были рождены в каких-то других странах, в первом поколении, из Бангладеш, Греции, из Африки, Сахаре. Из Карибов 150 разных языков существует только в Куинсе. И мы решили провести такой эксперимент в 2008 году. И в фильме 2009 Human Family Tree он был номинирован на Эмми. Хороший фильм, но не сказать так вот. Так вот, это ценно, чтобы было не фильм, а посмотреть. Насколько различно с генетической точки зрения это место? Можно вот эту различность человечества буквально в этом маленьком районе деконструировать? Well, I'm going to show you a little clip from the film to give you a sense of what that project was all about. Deep inside each one of us, a story is waiting to be told. A story of sex, adventure, and survival. It begins in Africa with the dawn of humanity. It careens through epic droughts and ice ages and climaxes only when we've reached the ends of the earth. Now, we tell this story with a bold experiment. On a single day, in a single street, 
the DNA of just a handful of people, we set out to trace the ancient journeys of every person alive today and reveal how we all connect on the human family tree. It's the quintessential melting pot. Huddled masses from all over the globe have come here for centuries in search of a better life. And up the East River, just across from Manhattan, we find they've never stopped coming. This is one of the most diverse spots on Earth. Queens, New York, Queens, New York, USA. People are flocking to the 30th Avenue Люди Street Fair here in Queens, Astoria District, where geneticist Spencer Wells and Astoria. his team are on a mission. Just on one side, They're scraping DNA off the cheeks of this kaleidoscope of people and attempting to retrace humanity's journey to all corners of the earth on this single street. That's it. This place is really a microcosm of the world. You got people from all over the planet just walking around on this one street. I mean, today we've been talking to people from Bangladesh, from Thailand, people from Pakistan, Ecuador, all over the Afro-Caribbean region. I mean, it's an amazing opportunity. It's pretty, pretty hard, but don't, you certainly don't want to draw the line. Swabbing here today is part of a much larger effort by National Geographic, NIBM. It's called the Genographic Project. The project has spent the last four years collecting DNA from 350,000 people around the world. Honey, did you use your teeth in the morning? <laughs> it is basically a quest to understand you know, where we all came from. That's one of those key human questions that everybody is, is kind of searching for the answer to. And, you know, who am I? Who are my ancestors? And we're using the tools of science to get the answers to that. Now, hundreds of New Yorkers are lining up to get these questions answered too and learn about their own ancient pasts. Uh, I think we were for something unexpected, you know, because we, we sort of know where we're from, but you know, we don't really know where we're from. Uh, Genealogy allows most of us to trace our ancestors back about four or five generations, to great-great-grandparents, perhaps. I'm probably we can go as far as probably 100 years. Maybe it's a few years ancestors, so we're lucky. If we're lucky. We know where these ancestors live. These DNA tests tell a deeper story. Rather than taking us back just a handful of generations, they take us back many thousands. No matter where we're from, how different we appear, if we look back through the generations at the roots of the human family tree, we find we are all in we descend from a small group of homo sapiens who began eking out living in Africa around 200,000 years ago. People didn't leave Africa until much later, when hard times or greener pastures led them out. Ultimately, they gave rise to this bunch of New Yorkers. Our ancient connections may not be obvious to this group. Our ancestors adapted to different climates, and as a result, humans are now among the most physically varied-looking species on the planet. But looks can be deceiving. We're basically no, identical at the genetic way. level. I mean, if you, you look at the average person's DNA sequence and compare the same region to another person they're unrelated to, you know, they're 99.9% .9 identical. Oh, that? Yeah. Look right here. This is great. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and end it there. Um,
Давайте немножко монтаж сделаем небольшой. Мы действительно смогли оценить всю историю человечества даже вот из этой небольшой группы людей, которые живут в Куинзе. Когда мы все эти статы опубликовали, вот мы вот так вот поставили вот так людей на эти критопаические, и мы увидим, что из Южной Америки, из Северной Америки, Юго-Восточной Азии, европейцы, люди из Ближнего Востока, Северной Африки, и... Видите, такая очень разнообразная выборка по всему миру. Это формирует такую популяцию, как я говорил раньше, потенциально. Все это смешивалось, и все это происходит в мире сейчас. Если посмотреть на подъем в межэтнических браках, например, да, не очень хороший термин, но я понимаю, межэтнические браки все чаще и чаще происходят по всей планете. Это лишь статистическое исследование. Буквально пару лет назад были представлены опубликованы от 3% в США до 17% сегодня, буквально последних пары поколений. И даже не только в США это наблюдается, 25% браков или сожительств в России на самом деле это межэтнические браки. То же самое в среднем, 10% в США, а вернее в Великобритании, но если посмотреть на уже 40, то здесь от 20 до 40% межэтнические браки. Это глобальный тренд, глобальное направление, которое мы видим. И мы это видим, что мы прошли такой, знаете, полный круг. Мы начали все вместе в нашем африканском доме 60 лет назад. Потом мы были разбросаны на всей земле, а теперь возвращаемся обратно. И это, на самом деле, задает любопытный вопрос о том, куда мы движемся в будущем. И я много об этом говорил с кинопроизводителями, с продюсерами. Я смотрю на пару проектов, которые могли бы сделать будущее. Такой вопрос в том, как будет выглядеть лицо с этим человеком через сто лет? На самом деле, это лицо будет сильно отличаться, может быть, того, что сейчас наблюдается от лиц наших бабушек и дедушек. Похоже ли это на лицо человека в 2006 году? Может быть, это близко к тому, что будет в реальности. Посмотрим, что случится через пару поколений. Это очаровательно. Далее, uh, в принципе, могу сказать, что это какие-то основные Спасибо вещи, которые хотел сказать Спасибо. сегодня. Спасибо большое. Спасибо. И Would буду like рад ответить на say. ваши вопросы. Uh, друзья, uh, я прошу вас не расходиться, потому что после вопросов и ответов у нас будет uh, розыгрыш ДНК. Spencer, и, собственно, мы расскажем, почему мы с компанией Мамонды решили сделать uh, сегодня для вас это мероприятие. А сейчас мы, на самом деле, оставим время для трех вопросов. Вопросов, и я жду ваши руки, чтобы вы адресовали, пожалуйста, да, вам сейчас. Я прошу по-русски, да. У меня не политкорректный вопрос. Насколько те технологии, о которых вы рассказывали, могут быть использованы для этнической дискриминации и чисток, скажем, правительствами или националистами? So the question is about whether it can be misused by governments. And of course, any technology can be used potentially. I think the bigger message that comes through is that people are much more closely related than we ever suspected when we started this work. And it would be misguided to try and use it for those purposes, especially as we're going through a greater mix of things. And we're going to have to use it for those purposes, especially as we're going through a greater mix of things. And we're going to have to use it for those purposes, especially as we're going through a greater mix of things. Вот эту вот историческую волну остановить. Все, корабль отплыл в море. Слишком поздно уже в рамках этой сильной траектории пытаться как-то ее изменить. Генетические данные говорят очень четко, и мы все часть одной большой человеческой семьи. Спасибо. Да, вот там вопрос. Добрый вечер. Спасибо большое за ваш сегодняшний доклад. Это было безумно интересно. Меня зовут Анита, и у меня смешная кровь. Я наполовину скинь, наполовину русская. Соответственно, меня долго мучают вопросы того, какое у меня происхождение, что на самом деле стоит за моей спиной и так далее. И я решила пройти два теста. Первый был 23andMe и второй – компании Prometheus. Наверное, вы знаете ее. Соответственно, это компания 23andMe из большой четверки, которая была показана на слайде. Результаты гласили о том, что у меня должна быть светлая кожа и прямые волосы, что, очевидно, не так. Соответственно, у меня возникает вопрос, насколько я могу этому доверять. В то время как результаты компании Prometheus оказались очень сложными для трактования, 
и я совершенно не пойму, к кому мне обратиться, чтобы понять, что там написано. Подскажите, что делать. Спасибо. Отличный вопрос. И вопрос о том, вот результаты тестов, да, вот вы получили, их было сложно расшифровать, или они были в некоторых ситуациях даже некорректными. Должен сказать следующее, наука здесь развивается очень быстро. Наверное, вы тест прошли там пару-тройку лет назад, да, наверное, два года назад. Два месяца назад, ага. В этой ситуации должен попросить прощения, 23 имеется, и наука, тем не менее, Здесь развивается очень быстро и секвенирование ДНК и генотипирование чипов, на самом деле, которые используются здесь. Да, мы, на самом деле, открываем новые вариации геномов, в том числе это касается и цвета волос, и цвета кожи. Все это, на самом деле, будет включаться со временем в расшифровку ваших результатов. Вам не нужно заново расшифровать ваши ДНК, но и метод шифровки будет совершенствоваться, и интерпретации тоже. Да, многие из этих тестов первого поколения вот вам дают список результатов на сайте, и большинство людей на самом деле смотрят результаты один раз, никогда к ним не возвращаются. Распечатали, показали всем семье, но часто они не живут с этими результатами, не понимают их глубинно, и это одна из причин, которая ведет вот к таким вот иммерсивным способом наблюдения в рамках приложения. Мы хотим, чтобы ваши результаты имели какое-то отношение к вашей повседневной жизни, чтобы вы могли иметь доступ к этим данным где угодно. Поэтому мы хотим сделать вот мобильные приложения, мы хотим разбить эти данные на компоненты, которые вам интересны по-настоящему, конкретный данный момент вашей жизни. Например, там, ваши предки по материнской линии вам нужны, например. Вам не нужны, например, в такой ситуации ваши данные о болезнях, о том, какие риски, заболевания у вас есть. Поэтому, да, я понимаю, да, что отрасль изменяется, может быть, данные все точные, но мы ученые, мы разрабатываем эти экспириенсы, мы хотим принимать во внимание, что средний человек может быть не генетик, нет, и нам нужно стараться во многом, чтобы демократизировать такого рода вещи. И, да, ранние тесты, мы их видим, эти данные получить легко. Наука сам по себе, это отрасль науки, она очаровательна. Но мы должны сделать генетические тесты релевантны к отношению к тем людям, которые вообще никогда не думали об этом раньше. Вот у нас сейчас 5 миллионов тестов. Мы хотим, чтобы было 50 миллионов тестов. Это сложнее, и мы хотим это сделать сейчас. В этом наша цель текущая. Спасибо. И третий вопрос, где вы уже задали. У меня светит. Да, есть там, все, отлично. Я бы хотел спросить, насколько вот эта наука позволяет будущее предсказывать. Я имею в виду не внешний вид людей, а, например, то, как факторы окружающей среды и так далее влияют, например, на мутации и так далее, на здоровье населения и так далее. Надеюсь, я понял ваш вопрос. Вы, наверное, имеете в виду, вот как эволюция работает и о скорости эволюции. Да, эволюция работает медленно, это правда. Мы живем в рамках очень большой популяции, глобально, и мы не увидим какие-то глобальные изменения от поколения к поколению. Это просто не произойдет. Но если мы, конечно, не вмешаемся, и мы недавно разработали технологии, которые не только позволяют нам выбирать гены, на которые мы можем влиять, которые мы хотим разместить в наших детях. При имплантации, генетическая диагностика в рамках удовлетворения. Это, на самом деле, уже лет 15 доступно. Я даже книгу об этом написал, которую я опубликовал в 2016 году. Семья в Великобритании использовала технологии для того, чтобы оптимизировать геном своего ребенка. Там был донор стабильных клеток. И смогли там ребенка излечить от смертельного заболевания, используя такие технологии, как IVF и PGD. И, соответственно, речь об донорах. Это было буквально вот, ну, фантастика с этим. Это было в 2004 году, и пресса об этом много писала. Люди думали, что это даже не стоит делать по этической причине. Теперь это рутинная процедура. Люди, которые знают об этом, и у них есть какое-то наследственное заболевание часто, на самом деле, проходят такие имплантации, чтобы их дети не получили такое заболевание. Это происходит. В последние пять лет мы разработали совершенно новую технологию, которая называется CRISPR. 
ISPR. Um, it's an acronym. Итак, and it is basically a way to go in and edit your genome. So you don't just have to look at a panel of embryos and choose from among the combinations that nature gave you, which you do for PGD and IVF. In principle, in the future, you'll be able to go in and create novel combinations. And effectively, start as, with a blank slate and design a child. That really gets into an ethical minefield. Да, здесь, конечно же, очень много технических вопросов. И ученые в США, и в Европе, и в Китае встречаются и обсуждают очень много этические стороны этих вопросов, что это нам использовать, не стоит нам это использовать. Но это одна из современных сильных технологий генома. Когда мы выпустили вот джин из бутылки, есть эксперименты, которые вот делают то, что я сейчас описал. Измерение генома живущих индивидов, детей. Но ближайшие 10-15 лет это станет частью Есть здесь технические преграды, которые нужно преодолеть, но я предлагаю, что важнее здесь даже этнические проблемы, социальные проблемы, с которыми нужно столкнуться. Да, я сам думаю об этом много, и исторически над этим работал. Коммуникация, научная коммуникация, чтобы сообщать, что есть научная сторона в этом, должна быть общественная дискуссия. Я публикую научные работы, это важно, но коммуникация того, что значит исследование, это тоже важно, потому что мы, как общество, должны принимать эти решения, но чем меньше мы об этом знаем, тем, конечно же, хуже, тем сложнее нам сделать правильные решения, принять правильные решения. Современные средние статистические человек не знают вообще, какие важные исследования или опасные исследования производит наука сейчас, и что несет с собой такие вещи, как CRISPR. И моя большая роль в том, чтобы распространять знания, обучать людей в этой области, И мы, конечно, должны вести большую Спасибо широкую большое, дискуссию Спенсер. здесь. Сейчас я бы Спенсер. хотела передать слово директору по спецпроектам компании Мамонда Алану, чтобы он рассказал, собственно, почему компания выступила партнером. А для вас, для нашей аудитории сейчас будут приятные сюрпризы. Ну и, собственно, спасибо большое, Спенсер. Да, и сейчас передаю слово Алану. Спасибо большое.